Hello everyone, I'm going to play through every single LucasArts adventure, starting with the very first one, Manic Mansion. Technically they made Labyrinth before, but Manic Mansion is really the one that started the whole SCUM uh, adventure scripting system, which literally SCUM is scripting utility for Manic Mansion. Um, so we have to select two additional characters that are going to help us during the game. and. Manic Mansion is really interesting in that sense that it had a very open uh, world for its time where you had more than one solution to the problems and the choice of these additional kids is actually very important throughout the game. You basically play through the game with three different kids, each which has special abilities and each which can be used to solve riddles in a different way. Um, Dave is the main protagonist. He has to rescue his girlfriend Sandy, which was captured by the evil Dr. Fred, which is why you know you have to select two other kids. And he doesn't have any special skills. On the other hand, you have Jeff, the surfer dude. He also has no special skills, so I would not actually recommend ch picking him unless you really like surfer dudes. Uh, you have Sid, who is a uh, rock musician. He can compose a demo tape and get a record contract that's required later on. Uh, you have Razor, who is also a musician, and she she's basically the same as Sid in terms of her abilities. So there's really not much uh, difference between them apart from occasional flavor. Um, Michael, he is a photographer. He can develop a film which contains sec a weird ad secret plans and that way he can gain Ed's friendship. Uh, you got Wendy who is a novelist and she can finish the autobiography of the media which is the bad guy in the in the game and that's her way to get past the last riddle in the game. And then you have Bernard who is your typical geek and he is the one who can fix electronics and uh, he can call the uh, alien police and get, you know, to uh, through the game by using this skill. He is also pretty much one of the ones that make the game the easiest to solve, in my opinion. Although my favorite ending is actually Wendy's ending. So, um, yeah. So for 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 this ending though I'm going to choose uh, Bernard as my main character and you really only need one kid with an ability to actually finish the game like the fact that you have three kids sounds great and complex but in reality there's just two maybe maybe three riddles in the game that actually require these abilities uh, and for the last riddle in the game you have to have one uh, kid with abilities and it's possible to die during the game which is not necessarily a game stopper because you only need two kids to survive to, to finish the game really but you do need two uh, so I'm going to pick Bernard as my main character and I'm just going to uh, pick Razor just as my third, third kid even though I'm not going to make much use of her skills um, so yeah, I mean that was a like a discussion topic during the day, or you know, in a say it was always about um, are there combinations that make the game unwinnable? And the answer is no. You only need one kid with abilities. The music was pretty epic for its day. It's still a really nice tune. For me, not as great as the Zack McCracken tune, which is absolutely sacred to me, but more on that when I'm actually playing Zack McCracken. Um, the famous scrolling intro with the chainsaw at the end. screen of the game. I, I saw it at the time, like the moon in the background, the grass, the fence, all of that was really neat. I mean the game obviously hasn't aged too well and I'm playing the original uh, 
version of the game which doesn't have the you know nice 256 color graphics because I mean this is Manic Manson how it was created back in the day and yeah. Uh, so one of the things that you have in the old LucasArts adventures is nothing happens when you hover over objects which was really like required a lot of pixel hunting. So he has this what is command. I think the sound is stuck. No, it's not. So you have this what is command, which you can use to hover over the screen and find objects that way, which is kind of neat when it comes to um, rooms that don't have any lights in them. Um, yeah, your trespasser will be horribly mutilated. The idea behind Manic Manson was to make it like a real, like cheesy B movie horror game. And it's definitely, from, from what I read, inspired by these old uh, games. Um, not old games, sorry, old like 50s horror movies. So let's ring the doorbell. This is Weird Ed. He is the son of the family. So basically you have Dr. Ed, who is the bad guy. And then you have Edna, who is his wife and the crazy nurse. And then you have Weird Ed. It's actually Dr. Fred. Because Weird Ed is the son. And I wonder if he's going to let us in. I already know the answer, but let's try to keep the excitement up. Ringing the doorbell to lure him out of, the, out of this room is actually an important thing later on. Because we need to steal something from his room. Okay. Oh. I wonder... Uh, this was also something that, that you see a lot in the old adventures where you have a lot of verbs that are not necessarily overlapping but that seem to be very uh, unnecessarily complex. I mean, keep in mind this was after text adventure. This was after Sierra's King's Quest and the Infocom games that often had you guess the verb and really like you had to word stuff exactly the right way in order to get um, you know the game to do what you actually want to do and it was very frustrating at times so with this one you have your fixed 12 ver verbs I can actually not count it's 15 uh, but you have your fixed set of verbs and you have your uh, the ability to hover uh, over the screen with your mouse so you don't have to try to you know pick up key oh I don't understand pick up take key oh I don't understand key take small key on floor I don't understand on floor you know that was very stupid back in the day so with Manic Manson I can simply now go and pick up key this was big during the day like this was really a revolution in, in my opinion because this made the game actually more about solving puzzles and exploring the world rather than always trying to fight against the interface and of course every good American family always deposits the key under the doormat because what else would you do? Alright. So the first thing that we have to do is open, uh, go into the kitchen and lure out Edna. And I hope that I'm going to not mess this up. Because you can basically outrun her. Also, you shouldn't stay too long in the kitchen doorway because she will catch you and throw you into the dungeon, which is not a game stopper. That's that's one of the nice things about the game. Uh, the game is is old school in a way that you can bring the game into an unwinnable position, but you may not know about the fact that it's unwinnable. So um, it is hard to sometimes figure it out. Uh, one of the classic gags was always the pick up chainsaw. Oh, there's a chainsaw, let's use it. Oh, I think it's out of gas. Well, where's the gas for the chainsaw? There isn't any. So, hey, first cutscene. So, this is Dr. Fred and Sandy, our victim. And we have to rescue her. 
I don't exactly know if this is the first or the second release of Manic Manson for MS-DOS because if you saw some other versions they had the Edisons with blue skin which I always found really weird. It's like I, n I never understood why Dr. Fred, Edna and Ed would have green skin. It's like uh, blue skin. It doesn't make any sense. So this version has the correct colors. I think that this version is the one that I got from uh, Day of the Tentacle, which had the original Manic Manson fully playable as part of the game. So that was actually kind of neat. Um, so yeah, as you may see from some of the uh, items that are just apparently they are for flavor but some of them are actually useful for alternative uh, solutions to the game like the glass jar can be used to extract stamps from an envelope if I remember correctly which is required if you play with Sid or Razor or, or Wendy to basically send stuff through through mail um, I don't actually know if you had to extract the uh, the stamps using steam but there are some some items that are not really that 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 interesting or useful, and some items which are just uh, useful for certain solutions throughout the game. Um, so I'm starting out the game with Dave just to uh, do some preliminary steps that that are uh, useful or that are required actually to to advance. So we have. Um, we're going to encounter the green tentacle, which is like, you can't pass until you feed me. So he is actually one of the good guys more or less, he's just there in his house and Bernard cannot get past him. So I have to use any other kit because Bernard is apparently a very wimpy character, uh, but I can basically, I have to give him food, I think he wants food first. Um, walk to. Cannot pass until you feed me. Okay, so here uh, we are at is going to go to the kitchen, which means that if we are Dave, uh, we need to get out of his way like right now because he will walk through these hallways and when he finds us, he will capture us. So we're just going to sit tight and wait. Uh, actually, in the meantime, I can bring out over Bernard. As I said, you really only need two kids in the game. You need one kid with an ability and a second kid just to do some stuff uh, during during the game. So nothing terribly special. Uh, whoops, that was luck. So I should immediately f uh, escape. <laughs> And just wait a bit because we do not want to be thrown into the dungeon. Which again is not a big problem if you have one kid in the dungeon because there are ways to, again, you can easily finish the game with only two kids remaining. And uh, it's later on possible to open the dungeon and get the kid out of it. But you need at least two kids to get one kid out of the dungeon so it's uh, not possible to, to do both of them. Um, so Bernard, as I said, he's the geek so he can obviously fix uh, stuff. And so we need the radio tube. So yeah, here's one of these rooms where the what is command is really handy because I can find, oh there's a lamp right here. And then I can turn on the lamp. As I said, there's some overlap w uh, between verbs. Like, why do I have turn on, turn off, and then use? Technically, push, pull, open, close. You know, it's kind of like the same. And unlock, fix. Those are like really like I think fix has exactly two uses throughout the entire game, and that's just not that useful. I mean, in in later games, they consolidated those verbs a lot. Um, so yeah, back up to Green Tentacle. Again, he just needs, he, he just wants to be fed. Um, so let's give him the Tentacle Char. Oh, and he wants more food. 
Um, there's a very specific food that he wants. I forgot actually what it is, so I'm just going to pick up all the food and give it all to him. Um, there is some interesting, uh, interesting ways to get stuck, or at least seemingly stuck. Like as soon as I give him the food, he wants a drink, and it's possible to give him the wrong drink actually. Uh, which what am I doing? Pick up letters. I think he wants actually the broken bottles of ketchup. I remember there was something. But yeah, I said Manic Manson can get you into an un uh, unwinnable state. That that can totally happen, and when that happens, you may not immediately be aware of it. Um, pick up can cuts. Also, you may not want to pick up the bottle of developer because that breaks it. Uh, the bottle of developer is only important if you play as uh, as Michael, because he can later on get the developer fluid and use it to develop a film, which no other kid can do. We leave the refrigerator open because we love the climate and uh, it's our it's our way to fight global warming by introducing a little bit of coldness. Actually, Green Tentacle wants the wax fruits, which are in the painting room, which is right here. Uh, and right there. Yep, I haven't played this game in a long while, so I completely messed up the floor plan. It's also interesting how mansions and games are always very very strange you know the layout is like you know I mean th this one is not too bad but I sometimes wonder why would you choose such an impractical layout that's not how I would build my house even if I were rich and crazy I guess so um, all right where did we have the ball of wax fruit there we go yay that's what you wanted now he's thirsty, now he wants uh, fruit drinks. It's possible to, that you have given him the fruit drinks before and that would mean that now you, you seemingly stuck but that's when you just take the, the jar that, that I left behind and fill it with water and give that to him. But the important thing was just the fruit drinks. Uh, so this is the room that has the uh, developer fluid uh, way where uh, Michael would develop a film which is something that we don't really need but I'm still turning on the le red light even though my name is not Roxanne yay red light I mean again there's nothing uh, important in this playthrough so this is an example of things that are designed for other kids but that uh, we don't really care about uh, pick up dime. so this is Dr. Fred's bedroom and one of the nice things when we were scrolling is when you enter the room it just looks like you know his, his room is like you know the wanted poster which is actually important because it contains the phone number so this is for Bernard's walkthrough uh, call 9111 uh, he has to fix the radio, like the radio right now is broken and uh, anyway the, the important thing here is so you enter this room and it doesn't seem to be much but then you have to really walk through, through us to, uh, towards the end to actually see the, this ladder so that was actually kinda neat and then you have green tentacle again hey oh, I'm so depressed so as Sid and Razor you can now basically you have to get him a record contract which makes you your BFF and he will then later on help you um, which is again not the way that that we are choosing to, to play the game Here's another cutscene they kinda abandoned those cutscenes later on because they're kinda really not weird but they do interrupt the game flow a bit and the timing on those ones is really not always the the best, uh, the, the best way in terms of like narration. It's like I don't know. It feels like I'm not really in control of 
of, of the game, especially when you have to wait for a specific cutscene later on and just sit there and just wait for for a long time. Uh, but yeah, anyway, back to Bernard. Uh, open this loose panel, pick up the tape, because that's where you store cassette tapes, obviously. Uh, you can then, I think, turn on the phone. Yeah, you can actually uh, fix the phone. I think I have to fix it first. Yeah, it seems to be broken. So this is one of the two instances where you can actually fix phone with radio tube. Uh, oh yeah, I need some tools or something. Yeah, it's been a long while since I since I played that. Um, I actually would have needed Dave for that. That's cool. So you're going to listen to some sweet tentacle mating music. Which again, we don't need green tentacle at all in this playthrough. I could obviously do uh, select Razor and have her do some of the things, but I'm sticking with Banner because it's been a long time since I played the game, but I, I finished this game with Banner so many times. Uh, I think it might actually be one of the quickest ways to finish it. I don't know, but it's definitely a more interesting interesting way to me because I love fixing stuff and Banner is the geek in the group. It's possibly my favorite ending again, it's possibly Wendy, but anyway, give cassette tape to Dave. Oh. That's also one of the things in, in this old game where it's like you have to position your characters in, in specific ways sometimes so that the passing actually can get through them. And you keep Dave. Use cassette tape in cassette recorder. Use record on controller. Yeah, that's some sweet high pitched tentacle music. I think it's tentacle mating sounds according to the description. This is actually a nice clue, like the exploding vase, which is actually telling you oh, by the way, this. Breaks glass. Oh, nothing to read on it. Again, with Sid and Razor, we can now use like the piano to record a demo tape instead, which we can then use to get a Green Tentacular recording contract. So who will later on? We are not going to do that. Instead, we are going to use this high-pitched voice in order to get us a key. And of course, in this crazy house, the key is stuck on the chandelier. Uh, so use cassette tail. I like how it plays, even though I removed the tube from the radio. I mean, I guess that the tape is the tape has its own amplifier or whatever, but it just looks weird. Okay, so let's pick up the old rusty key. I actually forgot for which lock this one is. I believe. Oh. There are like four or five keys in the game, neither of them are terribly. Uh, useful for more than one one lock but I mean obviously that's what keys are but again the game in itself is relatively simple actually you now for its time it's it was obviously a, you know pretty s a significant game but it still had a lot of great ideas like pushing the gargoyle to open the secret door I was like that um, using the what is command to find lights and lamps I never really liked that much I mean that I think they have abandoned that in, in later games a bit. Uh, yeah, so the old rusty key is the one. Oh, 
Oh, I need to switch away f to Dave because weird ad is coming down now after somebody rang the doorbell, which is now a great opportunity to steal a package. So weird ad is waiting for a package that that some someone has to can steal. Again, we don't have much use for it in this playthrough except for befriending weird ad, which doesn't really give us much. And then we have to get the hell out of here because weird ad will not be friendly to us if he sees us with this package. And then He also closed the door on us, so that's why. Uh, oh, there we go, someone has the stamp cam off. <laughs> that would be illegal. Well, so it's breaking into somebody's house, even if it's for good reason. Um, so, yeah, anyway, so here we have the dungeon, which again isn't that big of a deal uh, once you get this old rusty key or second kid. If you ever find yourself stuck there's a loose brick which you can just push and which will basically open the door. And that's why you need two kids because it's impossible to get through the door in time unless your kid has the key. No, don't go that way. It's a we really weird use of perspective in this room. But it's kind of neat having a nuclear reactor in your in your basement because who doesn't? All right, let's get burn out some tools. Uh, pick up flashlight. Bernard is also the one that needs the flashlight because we have to fix the arcade machine. If, if you if you uh, remember a couple of minutes ago when I was in the arcade room, the, those machines they don't have power because of broken. Uh, power circuit so we have to fix that later on I never understood the use of the room we just went through that just felt like a really weird I don't actually think I can open this yeah I can't budget let's get some strength little wimp so yeah this room I think on some versions where you had like a picture in the background it was like a nice showcase but it doesn't have any purpose except in lengthening the game so that one was kind of weird. It's one of the few rooms in the game that doesn't actually seem to have any purpose whatsoever. Um, yeah, I don't understand what, it's, what the point of it was. Anyway, let's go up, let's go up again. If you played it on the NES, by the way, there's two versions on the NES. One was made by, by LucasArts, or LucasFilm Games as they were called in the day. And one is called, uh, one is made by a Japanese company. And they were censored as hell. Like, it's, it's not even Manic Manson anymore, really, in my opinion, just because it's... It's the same similar game, but there's really nothing to it, to to warrant like it's not good oh yeah it looks like someone's memoir but the writing is terrible uh written by a meteor meteor is you know the bad guy i guess in the game but this is uh useful if you play with wendy um which we don't so yeah and i have no idea what what's with this medical cabinet Anyway, we need to open the garage door and we also need to open something else, so which requires some more strengths that we have. So I mean back in the day, I mean that was a really interesting way to not only have more puzzle but also uh make the game feel longer by just have you walk around a lot. And like I have to go all the way up here, then I have to go all the way back down again. And through that long ass dining room that doesn't seem to have much purpose. Um, and it just, and if, if you keep in mind, you know, back in the day when we had, you know, floppy disks, it's 
it just means that this this little walk which here is instant on a modern PC but back in the day that was like a good you know five six minutes for basically nothing except making the game feel longer and learning to hate those long ass hallways that lose their they use after after a while like the hallway upstairs that used to have green tentacle is now pretty much useless like there's nothing that that I can really do in there um, because I don't have the right kit um, so let's pull bushes yeah, and then pull bang that's what you do when you work out you get super strength that allows you to rip gates without any sort of uh, breaking a sweat. So I mean, that's that's a great advertisement for fitness machines, is it? Again, I hate this room, but whatever. I don't actually think it's possible to pull this grate, not only because of the developer fluid. Yeah, it's broken glass. I think that even if you, if you have um, not spilled the developer. There we go. And of course in my infinite wisdom, yeah, Dave has the yellow key. The yellow key is the key that opens the, the car. So we also have to walk Dave through here. That's another interesting thing with multiple characters is the log logistic of, of things. Where, okay, they, you know, one kid needs an item that another kid has, but then you are in a situation where then you need another kid having that item and then you basically just walk uh, give your key to banner give paint removal to banner give dime to banner and that's pretty much Dave's useful usefulness done so yeah, the, the game mainly had a lot of things that weren't necessarily hard puzzles. I mean, obviously every you no know, puzzle and riddle is easy after you know the solution, but there's the, just a lot of uh, you know walking and just going to places that are on the other end of the house, which just doesn't seem that great anymore in the modern day and age. Here's by the way to paint the uh, silver fluid. Tools. So there's your tools. Now we can actually fix the telephone. But before we do that, we need to get into this pool with only slightly radiated water. Uh, so let's open the water valve. There's a time limit actually. If you don't, if if you wait too long. Then the house will explode. <laughs> Apparently, meltdowns are pretty uh, common, but I, mean, I guess that's just the price you pay when you have a nuclear reactor in your basement. Also, the sound gets annoying after a while. There's also an option to now basically kill Bernard, which would be really bad because he has all the items that we need and it will basically end the game. Or it wouldn't end the game, it would make it un un unwinnable. Uh, so let's close the water valve again. And again, it's just one of the things where it's possible to to lose the game without knowing that you actually lost it because there's no indication um, that it's not un unwinnable because when one of the kid dies all their items are gone forever you have no way of retrieving them which again you can lose one of the kids like if, if you if you watch I'm not using Razor at all I don't actually think I need her for anything um, 
and I'm basically just <sighs> yeah no I actually forgot something huh, very important and yeah I'm not actually using Razor at all during the game I think it, it's all I think I stole the the package to get the stamps which we don't need because then in this place we don't need it. I'm going to use her later on to ring the doorbell, but that's all the involvement that a third kid really has. Like you only need two kids uh, to win the game, and you shouldn't um, kill a kid that actually has an item that you need. Um, so we need some radiated water. You can actually, if, if you want another way to, to kill one of them, the characters is to put a jar of water into the microwave and then open the microwave because apparently radioactive fumes are bad for you. I wonder why. So yeah, I mean even though like Manic Manson is like the first scum game, it still has a lot of, uh, pretty much all of the elements that you expect from, from later games. You know, it's obviously the storytelling was like this really nice sense of humor. And even when it tries to be serious, it never actually tries to be, you know, really serious. It's always about tongue in cheek, cheesy B movie like intentionally. And you also have you know, your exploration, which for its time it was like a really high detailed game. Like it it really looked good. Uh, no, let's not use that. Yay! Radioactivity makes everything grow. Do I have the paint remover? Yeah, I have the paint remover. And again, some of the, the riddles are I don't want to say convoluted because they aren't actually that bad. It's it's just that uh, yeah, we need to turn on the light. Uh, this is something where we need two kids again, which now it makes actually sense to use Razor for this because Bernard is all the way up there. Bernard needs to fix the wires. Now, in order to fix the wires, the power needs to be out. And the power switch is behind the locked door, which requires a second kit to operate it. So I could walk Bernard all the way down, or I could, you know, walk him all the way down, push the gargoyle, bring Dave into the into the room, then walk Bernard all up again, and then use uh, Dave to turn on the uh, turn off the power. But that's not good. Um, so push gargoyle. Yeah, I, I saw it, like when I when I was playing the game as a kid. Pushing the goggle to open the secret door, that was freaking amazing. I really like that. That's that was ingenious. So again, the writing in this game is really good. I'm just going to move Razor away because I do not know if the purple tentacle is uh patrolling here. And I'm going to put the batteries in the flashlight. Um Turn off. Yeah. Again, we have some really uh, short window. This is one of the things that always like, get my adrenaline going because now I have to make sure that the flashlight has batteries, which means I have to open the radio, I need to do need to not get caught by the bubble tentacle and I need to um, Yeah, I need to change the batteries in the flashlight and I need to fix the wires, not get caught by the purple tentacle and not take too long because that would be a meltdown. Um, so that would be bad. So I can open the radio to get some batteries and then I can use the batteries in the flashlight. Then the flashlight will work again so I can now go back to 
Razor, push the cargo out. No. Changing the kit cancels the current action, but still has the uh, walk cycle going. I mean, again, this whole idea of multiple characters is really neat. The implementation is definitely not bad, but it sometimes feels a bit uh, convoluted and just not fully thought out. But again, that's where. Uh, Zack McCracken <sighs> Yeah, again, the, the whole idea of cutscenes, I don't like the implementation of that much because imagine you're playing this on a Commodore 64 with a joystick, that takes you a really long time to actually select stuff. And then you're just sitting there all the time, and you have to sit through this. And that's that. Now the wires are fixed. The, the reason that we have to fix the wires is we have to turn on the arcade cabinet, which is later on required to get a secret code. So that's all that we had to do here. Yeah, there's not much else that we have to do uh, in here. So this is one of the things where, again, also the cutscenes are not that great because I now have to wait until Dr. Fred plays the video game. Um, Why doesn't this work? It's missing a type A that will vacuum to be. Yeah, we know. Use radio tube in radio. Yeah. That's weird. I could have sworn that this is the right radio tube. Maybe I have to fix the phone first with this radio t uh, I'm actually pretty sure I have to fix the phone first with this radio tube because after it's been used up there it can no longer be retrieved um, so that's actually kinda neat how the game tries to, to protect you from failure um, yeah I was mentioning the NES version earlier apparently they had to remove the statue from the NES statue because apparently they don't like nude statues uh, especially not showing her crotch and apparently adding a shadow to the crotch only made it worse so yeah Nintendo was weird I definitely recommend playing it either on the Commodore 64 or this MS-DOS version that has the correct skin colors for the Addisons because I really don't get the the, the blue skin I mean that just seems weird Fixing the phone. I'm still not entirely sure why the radio tube doesn't work if I actually didn't need it, but just uh, the tools. I'm not entirely sure. But yeah, anyway, let's let's go upstairs again because now we have to make we have to do two things. One is we have to make a prank call to Edna, and we have to steal from Weird Ed. I'm going to steal from Weird Ed first. A new kid, Razor. So this is the second uh, point in the game. I think where Razor is actually useful. Because they're going to ring the doorbell. 
which will lure Weird Ed out of his room. And we have to wait for a couple of seconds. I never really know how much, so now would actually be a good time for saving. Um, but since we have the old rusty key, we don't actually have to do that. So we need to steal his hamster, which hides his card. And I think we also had to break his piggy bank. Um, which actually requires us to use the to use the fitness machine so we can just break the piggy bank but we don't actually need it that much anyway Yay. this is the cutscene that we were waiting for like Dr. Fred he's playing Meteor Mass and we have to get the high score which it happens to be the code for uh, the, the lap door later on um, use water faucet handle on water faucet and then turn on water faucet 2275 that's Edna's code yeah here's a sponge the sponge is used to get the developer fluid from the ground which again if you play Michael then that's what you would need to do uh, let's see if Fred is already... no, that's... I think if you use this one twice then you actually get um, a longer bonus like this oh no actually he has said he had enough like this training only lasts for a certain amount of time Yep, again, and again, and again. And just let's wait a little bit more and instead look at the calendar. May, May 1972. Now I have to look up who was actually in the magazine at the time. We may have to do this multiple times. That's that's one of the things where we are now trying to guess what the game actually wants. Oh, it's open piggy bank. Now it wants a dime. And again, we have limited time because Ed will come back and he will throw us into the dungeon, which is not a big problem because we have the old rusty key, but still, it's not something that we want to necessarily do a lot. Um, Oops, actually, Ed isn't back yet. Again, that's now one of the things where we now have to wait for an indefinite amount of time or for an unspecified amount of time until the game magically decides, okay, now uh, Ed is back in his room. And until then, we basically just have to sit tight because there's nothing else to do, really. Um, because essentially, I almost won the game. Yeah, I can't really think about much else to do, so we have to retrieve the, the code for for the laboratory, which we're going to do right now. special key to open to open that one. So yellow key was the car key. The old rusty key doesn't do anything on here. That's the dungeon key. The glowing key is for down below. And a dime isn't enough to play the game. 
that that that's that's right. I need to I need to get the the right combination for uh, not the right combination. I need to get a quarter or the key to open the coin box. Um, there's a really long way around getting the coin, but there is also a better one. So I'm just going to prank call Edna. I think her number was 2275. So this is something that you can do as Bernard. If you, if you don't have Bernard to fix the phone for you, then you can get one kid arrested into the dungeon and use that time to uh, sneak into Edna's room. Which is again one of the reasons I prefer to play with Bernard. And we, we need that golden key that's on the on the right side. And now Edna is going to teach us about how to properly do uh, prank phone calls. Which is maybe not something that we want to hear, which is why it's good that this game is so limited in the amount of sound that it had. Uh, Edna, uh, pick up key. Edna has an attic as well, which seems to be normal for like the architecture of this house that everybody has their own private attic. Um, the attic contains a safe, and you could basically use the observatory to which you get when you climb up the plant to read the combination to the safe, which is a really uh, weird way to get one quarter when you can basically just steal a small key, open that one. I actually think I have to do that. I can't get... Yeah, there's nothing in there. I have to do that. Sorry, I have I thought I could basically get the quarter that Dr. Fred used, but now I have to go all the way, which is fine because that's actually a pretty fun part of it. That is if you have enough dimes. I think you only need three because you go right three times. I forgot. Okay. I think the plant is too aggressive to climb it, which the game doesn't tell us really at this point. Like if you saw like using the plant didn't yield any response, which I guess is because of the really limited capacity um, of, of you know the original Commodore 64 floppy disks, and maybe it was just an oversight because according to uh, Ron Gilbert during his uh, GDC talk about Manic Mansion, they really, you know, rush this thing a little bit in, in, in places, I don't know. If, if you should actually really watch Ron Gilbert's uh, GDC talk about Manic Mansion. Um, and here's by the way why Pepsi is bad uh, for you, because apparently it completely doses you off. Anyway, we have a really powerful telescope, and I do not exactly know how the physics work, but we're going to use this really powerful telescope to look into Etna's attic, which is kind of creepy if you think about it, but push right button. Because if there's one thing that I really don't want to see, then it's stay mad now. I think I have to, I have to rotate it three times. Yeah. Actually, I think this is correct. Uh, of course, Razor can't do this. I 
This is not one of the things where it's, where it's good to have three kids, just because it means that Bernard can stay up there because he kind of needs to uh, look at the combination, whereas Razor can be the one that triggers it. That that picture that you saw earlier with the spider, it should have a combination underneath it, but in order to actually see the combination, I first need to uh, open the safe or get to the safe because it's hidden. Um, so let's have Razor be the bait. Again, a lot of walking. Which in the end, I mean, Manic Manson had a lot of rooms and it definitely had a lot of really good uh, scenery and connectivity, but after after you're done with the room, there's just a lot of that walking. I mean, you just walk through areas that have no longer any purpose in the game and you just spend a lot of time walking instead of actually playing or solving riddles or anything like that. I mean, newer games also have that, but modern adventures they are more like separating the games into different acts that have different rooms or different uh, places to go to so that way when you're done with a, with a location you simply go to the next act which has a different set of locations or uh, re um, changes the, the locations that you've already been through so that way you you constantly have a set of location that is actually useful um, to the game and you're not you're not just sitting there doing stupid backtracking through empty and no longer needed locations okay uh, what is Again, I'm really not a big fan of those what is puzzles because it just feels cheap. And then obviously guess the puzzle. What is... Right. Yeah, we have to actually open the painting, which now has to save and conveniently it has the combination written under it but you have to use a telescope to actually see it. Three six two one. Give it a razor. Three six two one. Pick up envelope. Open. Hey, it has a quarter. Head. Okay. And this is what happens if you get caught. You get thrown into the dungeon. Apparently Etna is a zero on the Kinsey scale, which if you had any hope, yeah sorry I kinda dash them now. So I mean Razor cannot escape the dungeon on her own. Uh, you need two two kids to in the dungeon to get one kid out, and you also need two kids to rescue somebody from the dungeon. So let's do that again. So Bernard, he has the old rusty key, which I'm going to use to rescue Razor from the dungeon because I need her quarter. Correct solution would obviously have been to call Etna again with Dave to uh, distract her, and then and then have Razor or walk out unharmed. But well, at least there's no risk of dying if you if you do it that way. Push the gargoyle. Go to Bernard. I like how there's an unlock command, but you can as well use it. <laughs> uh, 
Well, apparently somebody did. That, by the way, is an important uh, hint. The purple card key, which is in the hamster uh, cage. And, I mean, I already got it, but this is one of the things where uh, an important clue is given to you give quarter to bear now given to you by just waiting long enough rather than solving a puzzle or, or anything like that so that's not really great game design I mean obviously this is 1987 I think and this is it was a significant game I'm not trying to you know, not not give the guys who made it credit, but I think they admitted it themselves that this didn't wasn't too 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 great. Um, but yeah, anyway, let's play some meteor mass. And you have to wait until Doctor Fred played it because you need to get his high score, which is the DFS, which apparently is Doctor Fred. I think Strange was the original name. Uh, before they ran to Edison, but yeah, the code is 5858. And now that we open the coin box, we actually can retrieve the quarter. If we need to see the number again, we can now totally do so. Okay, now we are almost about to finish the game because now I only need to call the police, unlock the laboratory, and then get the meteor. I think I have to read the, the poster first. Yeah, 9111. That is so strange. That should totally work. Uh, you have to use this, uh, the tube socket and not the radio, even though he walks over there. That is stupid, but well. Let's call the police on the Or police because phoning aliens is the normal most normal thing in the world if only ET wanted to had access to that that radio this is another time thing so he says oh I'll be there in five minutes he actually literally means five minutes um, which gives us a timing window that we have to actually adhere to because if he comes and the meteor, the laboratory is not open, he will leave. We can then call him again, and I think we can call him one or once or twice more, but if we call him too often without the laboratory being open, then he will out, outright refuse to, to come, and we have to find another way to get rid of the meteor, which may be a problem. Again, it's, it's one of the things where there's multiple solutions to the game, but you can blow it in a really bad way where you basically run out of um, ways to solve the game without actually knowing that that you no longer can beat the game uh, so where's the glowing key apparently you also have to use two padlocks because why not with the same key then you open the inner door 5858 and now you basically just sit tight and wait because we need the police to arrive to arrest the meteor so that we can progress through this area in the meantime let's look at some other things that we could have done we could have uh, given the hamster to to weird add actually let me actually just show you something like the the riddle that's the one key riddle in the game is this room we have to get past purple tentacle and to get through purple tentacle there are several opportunities to get 
to uh, several options to get uh, past them. One option is to befriend Green Tentacle, and then Green Tentacle will chase him away. To befriend Green Tentacle, you have to get the recording contract, which requires Sid or Razor. Another option is to uh, befriend Weird Ed and have him uh, chase away uh, the, the purple tentacle. Doing that requires uh, Michael because he can develop secret plans and those secret plans uh, can then be given to Weird Ed and then he's your best friend. Uh, you can fix up the manuscript, the memoirs that we saw uh, earlier and that is Wendy's way of doing it. You can then give the writing contract that you get from them to uh, uh, Purple Tentacle and then he, he's going to leave you alone. Oh yeah, shutting off power, that would be bad. And the last way is you can get the, uh, the Meteor Police badge because apparently Purple Tentacle really fears the police which is where Ben R comes in. So every kid has a way to, to solve this with the exception of Jeff and Dave. Uh, they have again no skills whatsoever. And uh, that is the one key riddle in the game that actually makes use of the different kids. And because every kid has a way to get past uh, the purple tentacle on their own, there's no bad combination of kids. I mean again I, I recommend don't use Jeff at all because he is exactly like Dave. I mean he has a few lines but he has nothing nothing redeeming going on for him. Yeah and waiting more for the for the meteor police. Let's just for the heck of it move Dave up to Let's just move him to the radio room just in case we want to, we need to call the police again, which I do not think we have to. Yeah, I mean again, Manic Manson's use of timed events, it was a neat idea, but it just didn't work out too well because I'm literally just sitting here waiting and talking uh, while I'm waiting for the police to arrive. Murderous, slimy, purple meteor. Apparently it's a badass meteor. And I'm not sure if there's a way to uh, like accelerate the process because that would be that would be neat. Like again, literally just sitting here waiting. could make a joke about tentacles and uh, molesting women, but I think that the mental image is already there for your pervert. Walk up. Making sure that this is still open. Admiring the super secret lab. And I mean, again, the game was really, really revolutionary for its time. Like, there were graphic adventures beforehand. I mean, obviously, the King's Quest series by Sierra, uh, by, by Sierra is there to name. But Manic Manson was really the one that took a lot of the suckiness out of the, the games because it was more about playing the game, playing the riddles, and enjoying it rather than just fighting with the interface. Um, Again, there were some some weird things that uh, that are not necessarily well executed, but I mean, even even in hindsight, it's you know, it was a good good game. The staircase is apparently out of order because hey, it's a staircase. Why ever? There's no way to actually get get up there. Like there were some rumors that you could fix the staircase, but no, you really can't. 
Um, let me call the police again because there's also this weird thing where you call the police and then they say they came but really they didn't. Yeah, okay, I'll come back, but this time unlock the lab. I'm not sure if you have to unlock it first and if the five minutes is really just BS. Um, oh yeah, anyway, I called them again. So this time they should actually come. Like this element was completely removed in Zack McCracken as far as I'm as far as I remember. I guess I will find out soon. Yeah, he's playing Meteor Mass again. This is also another thing, like well you, you remember him playing Meteor Mass before. If I wouldn't have fixed the wires in time, then he would just be standing there and saying, Yeah, the game's not working. Then you fix the wires and then you have to wait until he plays it again. I'm not aware of any ways to like prematurely trigger it, but you just sit there and wait for the cutscene. I said I'm not a big big fan of that. What's interesting is also like there aren't a whole lot of items in the game. I mean there's certainly quite a few. Some of them are flavor items like the uh like the rotten turkey. But they aren't really that that important or revolutionary or whatever you want to call it. They're just there. Um, but you can construct a reasonably complex game, I mean it was a triple A game back in the day, without having to do too much in terms of like you don't have to have like hundreds of items. Even if you look at modern adventures, again every riddle is easy once you know it, but um, it only had a handful of items, you know, even modern games only have, you know, maybe two, maybe three dozen items that are actually used. And it, it's really, you don't need that much. I mean, again, I finished the game in a bit more than an hour. It would have been quicker if I wouldn't have to, you know, sit here and wait for the friggin' police to turn up. Um, yeah, it was just sitting tight and... Apparently Dr. Fred has turned off the, the power, which kind of sucks. I don't know if I could, if I can turn on the power myself and if I should. Like I can use the, the circuit breaker, but I'm not sure if I should actually be doing that. You know what, let's try saving the game. Oh, apparently the circuit breakers are not the ones that are actually causing the power outage. I don't know that I care about the power, I just don't know if that prevents the police from appearing. Not sure how a barred window would work in a basement. Like, what's behind it? I mean, it appears to be pitch black, but that's just one of the things that don't make any sense in the architecture of this thing. Those old rusty key. I mean, again, the unlock command doesn't have much purpose on its own. It's over. It's basically the same as use. I think that's why they removed it in later adventures because it really didn't make any sense. I mean, they were still obviously figuring out the whole the whole layout. And I'm basically just waiting. For either the police to arrive or the power to turn back on or whatever.
Hello, Mr. Police Officer. So he's Banner's way of, of getting rid of Purple Tentacle because Purple Tentacle not only respects the authorities apparently, but he also drops his badge, which we need. There, there are other ways around this. Um, like, it's possible to stuff the meteor into the trunk of the Edsel, which apparently is a converted space rocket. But we just let them take care of us. Which is also why the game is not lost if the police comes and the door is locked, because he still drops his badge, and his badge is really what we need. Um, give badge to purple tentacle. Yes, I'm with the meteor police. Yay. <laughs> Yeah. Wanna be a strong tentacle, but apparently Supposedly there was intended to be um a cross promotion between Pepsi and Lucasfilm that never happens, which is why they are working Pepsi machine in that, uh, that thing. So now Dr. Fred enables the self destruct mechanism, which is why we need to quickly disable the mind controlling machine. Anyway, mind controlling machine that seems to be something that's really a common topic. Yeah, just in case if you're curious, here you could stuff the meteor in the car and then it would take off. But what you just have to do is you have to flip the switch, which turns off the mad machine. And now Dr. Fred is all back to normal, very regretful, and he's of course going to stop the self-destruct mechanism. Tuna hat. I don't know who wrote that. But yeah, and that's Manic Manson for you. It's still a great showcase of adventure game design, the, the bare bones of like what you need in a game and what works and what doesn't. It it was never my favorite game because like my first Lucas Arts adventure was Zack McCracken. And that was absolutely important for me. But it is a great game, it has some, some nice humor, the, the riddles are interesting, but it definitely has its rough edges. But yeah. And now if you want you can press F4 and play again with different kids. So many different combinations. Again, every combination is viable, but there's never any reason to pick Jeff. So yeah, next time I'm going to play through Zack McCracken and we'll see what they have changed since Manic Mansion. <laughs>